Before we move on to the next module, right? A quick uh, summary of what we have done so far. So we introduced feed-forward neural networks, and we wanted to learn the uh, parameters right from the last layer to the first layer. And we figured out that what we can do is that we can just use the gradient descent algorithm as it is, except that we have this small problem that we have so many parameters now, and located at different different points in the network, right? Some at the initial layer, some at the final layer. And we want to compute the derivatives or the partial derivatives with respect to all of these. If you can do that, put them all in this large matrix, then we can just use gradient descent as it is, right? So that's what we figured out. And then we wanted to find out the gradients with respect to uh, the partial derivatives with respect to all these parameters. So then we realized that this can be done using chain rule because there's a path from your output, which is the loss function, to any of these weights. So we just need to follow that path. And apply this smart uh, this chain rule smartly, and just sum up the derivatives across all the paths that lead to that weight. Okay, so in that process, we started from the output layer. We just treated it a bit special because the output function is special, and this is the last layer. So we we'll just first computed the gradient with respect to the output layers. Then we figured out how to compute the gradients with respect to any of the hidden layers. And now, if you are at a particular hidden layer, now the weights that feed into this layer, we could Oh, we have not reached there, right? Oh, sorry. So now the next thing that we need to do is that we have computed the gradients with respect to any of these hidden layers, and now we want to find the gradients with respect to the parameters, which is the weights and the biases. So is the? Do you all remember this, or it's all long history, or just two days back, right? Okay, fine, fine. So now we are at the last point, which is computing gradients with respect to parameters. So again, this is the overall picture. We were in this chain rule. And we have come all the way to the last point where we are ready to now compute these quantities. Okay, this should be clear. Okay. Okay. So now start by recalling that a k is equal to b k plus w k h k minus one. Right. This is our activation formula, pre-activation formula. Right. So I am talking about these light blue guys. Okay, which is clear in the image. And now. I what have I done so far? I have been able to come up with a formula to write the gradient of the loss function with respect to any of these light green guys, right? That's what where we ended last time. We are, we are able to compute the gradients with respect to the uh, sorry light blue guys, okay? Uh, and now I want to compute the gradient with respect to any of these parameters or any of these parameters. So any parameter it does not matter. I'm at some ith activation layer, pre-activation layer, and I just want to compute the gradients with respect to the weights which feed into this layer. Okay, and that's what we are interested in. So we are just taking any layer k, and we want to find the uh, gradient with respect to the weights there. Okay. Now, uh, can you tell me? So can you tell me what what's the thing that I'm going to do here? How, what's the recipe that we have been following? Uh, I need to move. Okay. What's the recipe that we have been following? Apart from yelling at people who come late, we find the element-wise partial derivatives first, and then put them all together to get the gradient. Okay. What's the element here? What is? What am I looking for right now? I want to compute. Just fill in this blank. What goes here? W, any of these Ws, right? And in particular, say W K. That's what I'm looking for. So, what is the first thing that I'm going to attack? Good, W K I J. And once I have this for one of these guys, I just know a generic formula with respect to I J and K, and I can just put it into a gradient vector. Okay, is that fine? Okay. So now, can you? Uh, Okay, now from here to here, if I want to reach from here to here, so this is what I'm interested in, right? Now, how is a chain rule going to look on, look like based on whatever you have already seen? Till where have you already reached? You already know this quantity, right? Now, if I want this, how am I going to write it? 
I will find up to the light blue guys, which is this, I already know how to compute it. And then from the light blue guys, I'll go to the, is this fine, right? So this is the quantity that I'm looking for, okay? Now what is one element of this guy? Do AK by, is that fine? Okay, what's the dimension of this actually? Is it a scalar, a vector, a matrix, matrix or a tensor? What's a tensor? What is it? Is it a matrix? What are the dimensions? What does this derivative mean or this gradient mean? I change one element of WK, how much does one element of AK change? How many elements are there in AK? N. How many elements are there in WK? n cross n. So how many partial derivatives which I have? n cross n cross n. What is this? A tensor, right? So this is going to be a tensor, okay? So when I say one element of this, I mean this, okay? So this is one element of this gradient, okay? Now can you tell me the formula for this? What is this quantity? Hk minus hk minus 1 or hk minus 1 j or everyone gets this hk minus 1 i how many of you get this okay so let's do it right so you have ak1 ak2 ak3 that's your ak vector okay you have bk1 bk2 bk3 plus wk11 I uh, you know again this is one of those silly things but if everyone doesn't raise their hands I'm compelled to do this. So H K minus one one H K minus one two H K minus one three. Okay. So let's take one of these guys, right? So A K one, can you tell me the formula for that? Plus first row. Okay, one, two, one, three. Now, can you tell me this quantity? So, what is I here? One. Okay, so I want this by W K I. J, right? So I is 1, so I can take any of the J's. So let me take J equal to 2. So what is it going to be? This will go off, this is constant, this is constant. Only this term remains and the derivative is H K minus 1, 2, which is J, right? So that's what the formula says. So I have a formula for one of these guys, okay? And that's a generic formula. So always remember, if you can't figure out what it is, just write it down in scalar terms, just add up all the terms and you will get the formula, right? So now uh, this is what the chain rule is going to be. Is this fine? Okay. So this is what it's going to be. This is one element of that tensor. Okay. Is this fine? This is how that entire thing is going to look. Hmm? I've just flattened it out and put it here. Now let's take a simple example of WK belonging to R cross, uh, 3 cross 3. Everyone is fine so far, right? I mean, anyone who, everyone is fine, please raise your hands. I mean, fine, I mean not in life, but with the lecture, okay, fine. Okay, so this is what it looks like, right? For a 3 cross 3 matrix. Okay, fine. Now, let's see. Uh, we already found out that this guy is equal to h k minus 1 comma j, right? So this is what this matrix looks like. Hmm? Nothing rocket science here, right? So each of these quantities is actually can be written in this form where I appropriately substitute i, k and j and I know that this quantity can be further written as this quantity, right? That this is our clear, right? Okay. Uh, so now I have written it as 
this now can you simplify this I do use a lot of this okay can you simplify it does it look similar to something that you did on the assignment does this look like a matrix which has some very regular patterns yeah, I can see someone doing this and this everyone gets it okay so let's see so this the first column the second term in the product is all same throughout all the rows right what I mean is all these guys are similar same thing happens in the second row the third row right uh, the, sorry the second column and the third column what about the rows these are all equal right so what does this look like actually the outer product of two vectors everyone gets this raise your hands okay good so I don't need to do an example oh, so it's fine right this is an outer product of these two vectors one happens to the quantity to be the quantity that we already knew right and the other happens to be a quantity that we can figure out right I mean we already know this what is we know how to compute the hidden representations right the HKs we can compute okay so fine so finally we come to the biases this is what one entry looks like this is exactly the sum which I had written out right now I take the derivative with respect to BKI of the loss function so I could write it into as this chain rule where the first quantity is something I already know I have computed the gradient with respect to the pre-activation layers what about the second quantity unanimous row is what I was expecting one okay fine we can now write the gradient with respect to the bias what would it be what is this what is this it's just the gradient with respect to the pre-activation layer right simple okay fine so now we are done with all the gradients that we were interested in right